My name is Sam Bakri. I am the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisible. Evaluating the mental health of a public figure requires an inordinate amount of research. Over the past five years, I have watched well over 600 hours of Donald Trump in various settings. I have read everything he has written and everything he was quoted as saying. I have no such in-depth acquaintance with other candidates like Hillary Clinton. By now I'm convinced that Trump is a malignant narcissist. This view is shared by dozens of mental health professionals who went on public record with their analysis of his mental infirmity. Trump is dangerous, antisocial, destructive, vindictive, sadistic, and hypervigilant. He is hypersensitive and a bit paranoid. Trump regards himself as omniscient. In other words, he knows, knows it all. He is all-knowing. He is an authority on anything and everything from aesthetics to ethics. Trump lacks intellectual curiosity simply because he knows everything. Why would he be curious and what would he be curious about? He regards outside advice as both superfluous and injurious. Accepting advice implies that you are less than perfect, and Trump is perfect. Trump is likely to surround himself with timid yesmen and psychophantic acolytes. He is likely to generate an impregnable echo chamber, chamber rather than a council of wise men and women. Trump's grasp of nuanced reality is already very weak, but it is likely to deteriorate further to the point of paranoid psychosis. Faced with opposition, however tenuous, Trump is likely to react by scapegoating and by inciting street or state violence against targeted groups and individuals. Trump is the state, so his enemies in other words, anyone who as much as voices doubt or disagrees with him, that's his enemies, his enemies by definition are enemies of the state because he is the state. Owing to his self-perceived innate superiority, Trump regards himself as above and transcending laws made by lesser mortals. Laws are meant to trap and ensnare giants like him, to drag, to drag him down to the pedestrian level of mediocrity. Trump plays by the rules only when and only if they accord with his predilections and especially his self-interest. Like all narcissists, Trump believes that he is universally loved, adored and admired. He attributes this ostensible and utterly delusional blanket approbation to his effusive charm and his irresistibility. He is firmly convinced that he can motivate people to transgress against their own moral convictions and to break the law if necessary. How is he going to do that? By the sheer force of his monumental personality. Trump idealizes and then rapidly devalues people collectives, and institutions. Trump is in sempiternal flux. He is inconstant in his judgments, inconstant in his opinions, views, and his fleeting attachments. Trump is intellectually lazy, so he is a firm adherent of shortcuts and of fake it till you make it. It is a dangerous approach that led him to botch numerous business deals and to inflict untold damage and suffering on thousands of people. Trump is authoritarian in the worst sense of the word. In his disordered, chaotic mind, Trump's, Trump believes that he is infallible, 
incapable of erring, incapable of making mistakes. He believes that he's omnipotent, all-powerful, can achieve anything if he just sets his mind to it. He believes that he's omniscient. He needs to learn nothing, as he is the fount of all true intuitive knowledge and wisdom. These tendencies to regard oneself as infallible, as omniscient and omnipotent, these tendencies preclude any proper team work, any orderly governance, any institutional capacity, any flow of authority and responsibility, any structure, to put it plainly. Trump is an artist. He is led by inconsistent and intermittent inspiration, not by reliable, old-fashioned perspiration. He is not a self-made man, as he likes to present himself. Trump is a self-conjured caricature of a self-made man. Trump is guided by his alleged inner divine wisdom. He is a malevolent guru and cult leader, not a politician or a statesman. Ironically, Trump's much-trumpeted grandiosity is fragile because it is based on delusional and fantastic assumptions of perfection and intellectual brilliance, and these assumptions are very hard to defend. Trump's relentless and compulsive pursuit of affirmation and adulation of narcissistic supply is his way of buttressing his grandiose fantasy, which fantasies which otherwise are indefensible. Trump needs to constantly be idolized just to feel half-human. Criticism and disagreement, however minor, however well-intentioned, are perceived by Trump as unmitigated threats to the precarious house of cards that is his personality. Consequently, Trump is sadistically vindictive, aiming not just to counter such countervailing opinions regarding his godlike status, but to deter and intimidate future critics and hopefully ruin them for good. Finally, aiming to disavow his own fragility and the indisputable fact that his public persona is nothing but a fabrication, Trump ostentatiously and volubly abhors and berates the weak, the meek, losers, haters, of which is a prime example, the disabled, women, minorities, and anyone else who might remind him by their very existence of how far from perfect and brilliant he is. The public Trump is about hatred, resentment, rage, envy, and other negative emotions, because he is mercilessly driven by these very demons internally. Trump's quotidian existence is a Kafkaesque trial in which he stands accused of being a mere, average, not too bright, mortal and individual. In this trial, Trump is constantly found wanting and guilty as charged. His entire life is a desperate, last-ditch attempt to prove wrong the prosecution in this never-ending courtroom drama, which is Donald Trump's soul.